Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 535 at ACDC with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's going to be a nice day today. A mix of sun and clouds with a high of 88. Tonight, clear, low of 65. Tomorrow, well, maybe a bit of a mixed bag. Partly cloudy. There's a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm. Some of those storms could be severe with a high of 84. It's about 54 degrees right now in downtown Springfield. We will have tickets, <clears throat> excuse me, to see Roger Daltrey at Tanglewood. Also tickets to uh, Face to Face, that uh, Elton John, Billy Joel tribute. We'll have tickets for that too. And if you're going to be listening on the podcast later on today, uh, because you may have missed a part or what happened, uh, who, who knows? It's all brought to you by Marcotte Ford. They got your back for sales, service, parts, and rentals. Marcotte Ford in Holyoke. So much going on today, and we get right into it. Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Summer is almost here, and let's see. Marcotte Ford's got your back in sales, service, selection, basically everything. Oh, wait. Marcotte also has rentals. Say what? Yep, over 100 brand new models to choose from, including a brand new Mustang convertible that will really open some eyes. Rent them daily, weekly, weekend, monthly, whatever you need. Marcotte's hassle-free customer service team will get you into the perfect ride at a great rate. See more online, then visit Marcotte Ford in Holyoke and hit the road in confidence with the team that's got your back. When you need a rental, you need Marcotte Ford. I'm throwing a party Party to to celebrate. celebrate. Hey, it's Steve Nagel, and I want to... Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 552 and John Mellencamp with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's going to be sunny today with a high of 86. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds, uh, perhaps a shower or two with a high of 82. It's 53 right now in downtown Springfield. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood Trash. All right, and uh, we go to Taylor Swift this morning. Oh, good. Uh, You think it's easy to perform in front of thousands of people every night all over the world? No, of course it's not. It's not, or should I say, it's snot. It was around 50 degrees when Taylor Swift played Edinburgh, Scotland recently, and she had to fight through a runny nose. Unluckily for her, fans recorded her battle and plastered it all over the internet. Was she uh, dripping? Uh, in one video, Taylor wipes snot from her nose as she lowers her hand to her side. You can see it hanging from her fingers. In another, she wipes her nose, then runs her hand on her jumpsuit. It seems like she's trying to play it off as she's rubbing her hand seductively across her body. Well, I mean, if you're trying to demonstrate something, uh, that might be it. Yeah, you know, if, uh, you rarely see a good performance that involves a snot bubble. Well, on the third clip, she has to lick it as it drips down while she's uh, singing at her piano. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. A little Chopin, huh? <laughs> look what you made me do. <laughs> yes, but look what you made me goo. Some people are calling it <laughs> gross and nasty, but others say it makes seem, uh, Taylor seem more human. Listen, it, it happens, you know. I think I've been on stage before where it's your nose starts to run mm-hmm. because it's like, you know, your your adrenaline is going and, and your and your and your heartbeat's racing and right. all that stuff. So that, you know, and I hate to break it to you, people. I'm sure at some point in her life, Taylor Swift has eaten a booger. You have to. Everybody That's the only way does to keep it. your immune system up. Isn't that how they tell you that? Everybody has done it at least once. And don't you tell me you've never done it. Uh, listen, she she's a human being. Of course she is. Just or, like you or me. Or maybe, she she, just, maybe she's not. Maybe she's a robot. I and don't think so. that was just oil leaking from her face. It was, like, know, it was like, uh, like a WD-40 spill. Yeah. Uh, didn't I just say to you yesterday we don't do enough stories about Andrew McCarthy? We don't do enough stories about Andrew McCarthy. Andrew McCarthy's documentary about the Brat Pack in the 80s hits Hulu today. It's called Brats. Uh, Andrew wore, here's some highlights. Andrew wore a wig in the final scene of Pretty in Pink. The ending had to be reshot to show him getting with Molly Ringwald, but he had already cut his hair for the next role. About that. Huh. I'll be damned. That's interesting. Uh, Demi Moore had a sober coach on the set of St. Elmo's Fire. A sober coach. Yeah. Well, who was the drinking coach? That's what I wanted to know. Uh, Molly didn't participate in the documentary because she'd rather keep looking forward. Molly Ringwald. Yeah. 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 She was in a. She was in one of those Skinamax films, like in the '90s, where she bears it all. Get out of here. Yeah. 
Not all. Do you have she the exact the title of this uh, of this N- film? No, I do remember though. It's like because uh, I re- I remember some plot lines fr- from my from my younger days when I was watching uh, these movies during puberty. Right. Uh, it was a he was like a baseball player, and he was yeah. and he had a girlfriend, but Molly Ringwald really wanted him, and then she like tricks him into doing a one tricks him into doing a one night stand. Right. And then, uh, and but she's like, she's bearing it all on the top, and then she becomes a psycho, and she wants to kill him. See, I thought the uh, the soft core porn film that she did was this uh, this movie that was about all these kids that have to serve a detention on a Saturday, and she's with all these kids like at the school library. Yeah, there, there was no porn in that. I saw that documentary. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I could have sworn there was something. And the principal was a real uh, hard ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember that. Maybe the only exposed boob there was Judd Hirsch. Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson. Yeah, Judd. uh, Hey, Judd Hirsch in the Breakfast Club. Uh. What are you kids doing here? Anybody want some Swiss Miss Cocoa? Who wants Swiss Miss Cocoa? It's got the little marshmallows in it. I knew it was one Judd. (laughs) Judd Hirsch. (laughs) That's actually really funny to think that he would be in that movie. He plays a young Emilio Estevez. <laughs> That's right. We taped that kid up with medical tape. And then we ripped it off his body. Who wants, who, who wants some Swiss Miss Coco? You want some Swiss Miss Coco? And Danny DeVito is the uh, <laughs> is the detention monitor. Yeah. Hey, knuckleheads! <laughs> Enough dancing to Wang Chung songs. Speaking of Emilio, Emilio refused to do more movies with anyone from the Brat Pack after the Breakfast Club because he didn't want to be typecast. Yes, that was a good choice. He just wanted to be in horrible movies with his brother, like uh, what was it? it was it, it was uh, the Trash Man? Yeah, remember they were like two garbage men. Yeah, you know, between Men at Work, it was men, called oh, yeah. Men at Work. Between yeah. the Breakfast Club and, and Repo Man, that pretty yeah. much covers the entire history. The instrumental love song in St. Elmo's Fire hit number 15 on the Billboard 100. Hot 100. Then, not yeah. now. Oh, it's I was going like say. It, yeah. And uh, Andrew had a crush on Ali Sheedy. I can't wait to see this uh, this movie. There's this documentary. Well, it'll be okay. very uh, nostalgic for everybody. He had a crush on Ali Sheedy. Okay. Why not? Well, Ali Sheedy was this woman who actually came to life she was a mannequin in a store mm-hmm. and then he uh once he touched her yeah then she came to life while he was working in the store overnight did you ever see that documentary or ali sheedy i believe that is the plot line to the film mannequin yes you've seen it yes okay all right I so you seen get it, it. Yeah. oh i know how it ends too and they had to save the day she comes to life for real forever <laughs> ain't that the truth uh, let's see. Well, they kept Starship uh, employed with that stupid song. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to revisit the Saw franchise? Sure. Then you should subscribe to Disney+. Plus. You can stream the first seven Saw movies on Disney now. <laughs> That's a pretty messed up mix yeah, for, I mean, it's for like Disney. Children's movies and then slasher films. Uh, but as one person on social media put it, quote, Late stage capitalism doesn't get enough credit for occasionally being pretty funny. <laughs> and I'd like to see, I'd like to see like a whole uh, like a, like a Disney World like a whole you know saw ride. Yeah, yeah, you know, that like would you, be like you get on the on the ride. You have to be this tall, and then they you get they cut off your limbs by the time the, uh, you're done with the ride. I think they do that when you buy a ticket to the park. You Actually, feel like your limbs have been removed when you pay the price of a ticket. I think they remove your limbs if you have the balls to ask for a discount. Oh, is that how they do it down there? Yes. Oh, man, the magical world of Disney. Uh, Kim, Carda- uh, Kim Kardashian embarrassed her kids by misusing slang meant for young people. She really? Mis- yeah, she misused the word guyot, which hmm. means uh, you have a big butt. Oh, she must have had something to say. Oh, my God, the last time I misused my guy, it was when Ray J took the love luge on the inbound loin line and that <laughs> sex tape you can purchase on YouPorn for thirty nine ninety. <laughs> Do you ever take the no, uh, I haven't. The inbound on the, on the loin uh, line? I, I usually go outbound on that one. Uh, Caitlin? Well, I never got that down and dirty with your mother, Chris Kim, but she once went windsurfing on Mount Baldy. <laughs> and then I went to, I was going for the bronze in Athens. Really? Yeah. Athens, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is I cattle prodded the oyster ditch with the lap rocket. 
Have you ever cattle prodded the oyster ditch with the lap rocket? Boxing? I have not, but the weekend is coming up. Really? Well, you're in for a treat. And that is your Hollywood trash on Rock 102. Ah! Is take to Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, sunny and warm today with a high of 86. Tomorrow, uh, 82 for a high, but could see some scattered showers throughout the day. It's 53 right now in downtown Springfield. You know, I always uh, say that uh, I'm really sick and tired of Hollywood not coming up with fresh new ideas and they're rehashing old stuff. Yeah. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have wished for that. (laughs) What do you mean? There's a new animated movie coming out that you probably shouldn't take your kids to. It's called Spermageddon, and it's described as Disney's Inside Out, but for adults. This is a Disney film? Yeah. In a preview clip, two teenagers, animated, are about to have sex for the first time, and as the boy gets more and more excited, the residents of the little sperm village inside of him get ready to, you know, do what they're going to do. Right. Uh, So it's basically like the emotions in Inside Out. Oh, and there's musical numbers, too. Well, of course. It's a Disney film. Uh, Believe it or not, it's not meant to be R-rated. One of the directors said they want teenagers to see this. Quote, we never talked about whether we can make it more shocking. We talked about whether we could make it sweeter and more relatable. Mm. Uh, We wanted to demystify sex and having sex for the first time. It's normal for it to feel awkward. There's no word on uh, when or how anybody will get to see Spermageddon, but it has been completed. That means two things. So it's not coming to theaters? Uh, Well, no. Eventually it will. Uh, okay. It'll arrive in theaters. I uh, see. Soon. Um, what a weird concept for a for a movie, for a kid's movie. Well, you know, we don't, um, not, uh, not for nothing, but we don't really do a great job of uh, teaching our youth about what it's all about. Every, no. You know, in, you know, today you have kids who maybe... You know, learning about it by accidentally finding certain websites on the internet that may have or lead to a perverted uh, yeah. way of looking at the world. Do you remember the talk? Did your dad give you the talk? Actually, uh, it was my mom that gave me the talk. Wow, what happened there? It was just a talk. Really? Yeah. Oh. See, uh, mine was... Magical as an alcoholic uh, could make it. Yeah, yeah. I um, I remember the day. I remember. I remember everything about that moment of when he decided to say, "This is a good time." I I wait, think wait. it was after four Budweisers. Okay. Yeah. So this was an, a, like a provoked yeah. conversation where you say, "Well, hey, pops, where right. do babies come from?" No, I'll tell you how it happened. Okay. Okay. I was experiencing some weep at the time of 11 years old, 10 well, or 11, 11, 11 years old. It's an age of discovery. It's one of those things. And uh, remember the days when they hurt? <laughs> I wish I had those days again. Uh, be patient. It'll come back. You know what I'm talking about. Right? Oh, I it do. Hurt. Oh, it hurt bad. Sure. And I was uh, I was in pain. Like I didn't understand what was going on. Oh, of course not. So in, uh, I mentioned that. To my mother, to which she didn't respond at all. Okay. So then she went and obviously told my dad what had been happening. Okay. And by this point, he was already three in. Well, he, I, the day he decided this will be the day that he learns about uh, the ways of of the woman's. The way your dad was learning or the way you were learning? The way I was learning. Oh, this, well. this is what he was saying. He was like, today is that day. It's a Sunday <laughs> afternoon, and uh, I need to go to the grocery store. Let's take this kid with me to the grocery store, and we'll have that talk there. Well, that now, won't my, be traumatic at he, all. And he was, he was lubed up by about four or five of those Budweiser's. Okay. We had to go get more Budweiser. Well, it was a lengthy conversation. And then a loaf of bread from the food town. You can't have that conversation I, in an empty it, stomach. Isn't it weird how you can remember almost like every detail of a specific moment in yeah. your life that really didn't have that much of an impact 
on you. But you, you can't remember where you left your keys. Right. Yeah, yeah I know, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah, that yeah. every day. So he uh he gets me in the car and we're we're we drove we drive to the to the uh, liquor store first cuz that's the most important thing. <laughs> and then we drive to the food town because that's the guys for my mom that he didn't just go out and get beer. He also got a loaf of Italian bread too. Okay. Because fair enough. The, they're right next door to each other. And on the way back from the food town in Lakewood, New Jersey, <laughs> back down Tiffany Lane, uh-huh. he says to me, uh, I hear you got some things going on in the lower area. Now, he was a little bit more graphic than this. I don't want to be too graphic. It's too early in the morning. For of that. course, right. And uh, I was mortified that he was even talking about that. Because you probably thought that uh, you know Mama's going to keep him or yep tra- uh, shut on this one. Well, I didn't. Again, I didn't know what was happening to me. She was the nurse. I figured if she's seen anything, she was an ER nurse. She's seen it all. Sure, she's seen people doing things to themselves that they should have never have been doing. <laughs> and uh, so he's like giving me this talk, but he's like he's drunk. He's really drunk. Yeah. Okay. While he's driving his eleven-year-old son back to the house. So how did he, he, he uh, did he describe it to you? He uh, he said, uh, I don't even know if I can say this, but uh, he basically described it in the most scientific way. Okay. L- like like in a, well, you see, uh, the man uh, gets this thing, uh, you know, uh, uh, he okay. gets stiff. Yeah, And then right. uh, that goes into uh, to the woman right, and, yep, uh, yep. and then, uh, and then uh, you know. Uh, Nine months later, there's a baby. We're, right, right. That, that's basically how that came out. I can't, I can't really tell the whole story. If I was on a podcast, we'd yeah. be able to do this. See, now, in, in my case, I had the conversation yeah. with my mom. Now, both my parents are therapists, so they're going to deal with this in a very. Therapeutic you know, way. Very therapeutic, clinical, but yet emotionally reasonable way. Moving forward, Michael, could you please pick up your socks off your bedroom floor? I uh, can't, Mom. They're stuck there. <laughs> uh, so we had this conversation, and she you know, explained it all in a yeah. in a very in a very clinical way, you know, without saying you know, getting into all the 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 nasty parts of it. But like any good therapist, she charged me a twenty dollar copay, and then I had to schedule another appointment for two weeks. Oh yeah, all right, right, right. And then, yeah, that's that's how you got behind arrears in your bills. Well, we only we only got like halfway through, and she said, "I'm sorry, we're all out of time." Oh, I'm sorry. We we have to wrap this up. Uh, you've talked too much. <laughs> right. And then, as uh, the process is going on, a culmination and a climactical uh, thing is achieved. And I'm sorry, we're all out of time. See, that's yeah, see, a great that, way to do it. That's the way to do it. Leave so it you a, hanging. It was a cliffhanger. Yeah, that's exactly what it was for twenty bucks. And now you and now you you couldn't find out part two until you were with an actual human being. Well, the first time I had sex, you, I, was, it, I was so scared. You were? Oh, I was all alone. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the first time you were with a human, you probably were like, "My mom didn't tell me about this." <laughs> What's that this, smell? This didn't seem to apply to the conver- that conversation what's five years the, ago. Yeah, what's all these weird smells? Mom didn't say anything about that. <laughs> there was no discussion of the mess this would leave. Uh, so, uh, you, so that's the way my dad told me in the strong and, and at the end of the conversation, you go, now grab me another beer out of the bag over there. <laughs> Well, he had been through quite a lot. Well, that was a successful conversation for him. You know, he had to he had to get the confidence by yeah. greasing himself up with at least four beers before we left, and then had to have like this relief of, sigh of relief beer afterwards. Well, it was a real come down for him. Oh yes, it was. Oh, it was. Yeah. I don't even know what it meant. It's 624 on Rock 102. <laughs> Duncan has just released a new energy drink called Spark. It's 627 with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. Dan Brown has the full forecast for you. Uh, this week in Baxi's Musical Podcast, my guest is Chris Stein from Blondie. Uh, you know, everyone thinks of Blondie as just being Debbie Harry. It really was Chris Stein's band, and everybody was just following him. He was the guy in charge. Oh, okay. All right. N- no, seriously, he was. Anyway, uh, he's just written a, a brand new book. It was released uh, on Tuesday called Under a Rock. It's a, it's a really great memoir. And a fascinating story, and you'll be able to hear that interview on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and on rock102.com. Uh, next week, my guest is uh, biographer Simon Heavysides. He's written a book 
about uh, Adrian Borland, who is uh, one of these uh, misunderstood and partially forgotten geniuses from uh, from London. The name of his book is called Destiny Stop Screaming, The Life and Times of Adrian Borland. It's a powerful story about a guy who struggled with a brilliant musical career and also severe mental illness. And it's a really, uh, really good read, and you should check that out. And it's all brought to you by Metro Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram at Chickabee and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Very cool. You ready to laugh? I am ready to laugh. All right. Uh, uh, uh y- 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 yes. It's Here Bex and Nagel's joke of the day. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. On Rock 102. I make you laugh. Springfield's <laughs> classic rock. Three thieves, right? Yes. There are three of them. Uh, and as a final job together, plan on uh, robbing a sacred tomb. And locals warn them that any attempt to steal from the tomb will be cursed and great danger will befall them. But they decide to go through it with it anyway. Okay. So why not? They decide to go in one at a time in case there really is any danger. The first man enters the tomb, grabs as much as he can carry, and sprints out. And as he's leaving, he passes by a giant coffin, and he hears a booming voice say, If you dare to rob this sacred tomb, a great curse shall befall you. You shall die by fire. And this guy's, like, freaked out, but escapes the tomb unscathed with his riches, right? Okay. Okay. Second guy goes into the tomb, grabs as much as he can carry, and he sprints out. And as he's leaving, he also passes a large coffin and hears a booming voice say, If you dare to rob this sacred tomb, a great curse shall befall you. You shall die by water. He's kind of freaked out, but he knows the first guy got out okay, so he is too escapes unharmed with more wealth than he could ever imagine. Okay. Right? The third guy enters the tomb, grabs as much as he can carry, and he sprints out. And as he's leaving, he too passes the big coffin, and he hears a booming voice say, If you dare to rob this sacred tomb, a great curse shall befall you. You shall die by plague. Plague. Yes. And at this point, the thieves aren't scared anymore because they've all managed to get out with all the riches. So the third guy just walks out of the tomb. He just uh, His arms full of the spoils of his plunder. The three thieves part ways and go on to live a lavish, pleasant life using the treasure they'd stolen to get rich. And each man had done more than they could ever wanted to do, and each was in fantastic health for many years following the tomb robbing. Fast forward 20 years, and all the thieves have all forgotten the words that echoed from the tomb that fateful day. The first man was enjoying a bonfire with his friends at his Miami beach house. After a night of drinking, most everyone was drowsy or passed out completely. The first man stands up to go inside, trips over one of his friends, and fell headfirst into the fire pit. Wow. He suffers horrible burns all over his body and dies as a result of his injuries. That's terrible. Yeah. Then the story, that story made headlines, and after a while, word got back to the other two thieves that their friend had perished. Both of them had a very vague memory, something about a curse and dying by fire. But after a few months, they all forgot their old friend and went about their lavish lives. The second man was celebrating his birthday with his friends and family at an extravagant party on his private island. As night fell, he and a few of his friends decided to go down to the shore and go night swimming. They, too, were a bit intoxicated. And there was a bit of a storm brewing, but they hardly cared. After swimming for a while, the man gets swept out to sea. He's not a strong swimmer, and his friends can't see him, and he ends up drowning. Horrible. Terrible. Third man catches wind of this and starts to panic. Uh, Dying by fire, dying by water. Will he truly die by plague as was foretold by the sacred tomb? He starts to put the remainder of his wealth into his health. He He visits a different specialist every week, spends money on diets and workout programs, whatever he can do to stay healthy, right? Right. However, after several months, a mysterious illness befalls him. Doctors can't figure it out how many tests they run. He's confined to a hospital bed for weeks on end. He's too weak to even stand and walk. Okay. Right? However, he doesn't come any closer to dying, and he starts to regain hope that maybe he's beaten this curse, right? (laughs) His health begins to improve, and he soon has enough strength to sit up in bed (laughs) and eat on his own. He he never has any visitors, as his friends were his only friends because of his great fortune, right? One day, a nurse tells him he has a visitor, and he's surprised but excited, and the nurse and tells the nurse to send him in. She leaves, and he soon hears someone coming down the hallway, except it doesn't sound like footprints. It's more like an awful, clunky, dragging sound, as if somebody's struggling to push a heavy object down a hall, right? (laughs) He hears screams outside of his closed door and begins to panic as the noise gets closer, closer, closer. (laughs) 
He's still not <laughs> strong enough to get out of bed, much less escape. He starts looking around uh, him for something to defend himself with. The only things on his side table are a glass of water, a book he'd been reading, and some throat lozenges. Cough drops, as he had a pretty nasty cough, sure. right? Suddenly, the door swings open, staring the final thief in the face. Is that, uh, what do they call it, sarcophagus? Yeah. That sarcophagus from the tomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A voice booms out. You have attempted to avoid the curse, but death waits for no man. The coffin then begins inching towards him. It flies open, revealing emptiness. And the thief knows if he can't escape, he'll be trapped in that coffin and he will die. In the last attempt to defend himself, he starts throwing whatever he can at the sarcophagus. He chucks the lamp at it as hard as he can, but it keeps coming towards him. Then he tries the book. That doesn't work. The glass of water, nothing. The magazines, useless. Finally, all that's left of the cough drops. The man all but resigns himself to his fate, picks up the lozenges, closes his eyes, hurls a cough drop. The moment the cough drop hits it, the coffin stops. Because it's a cough because drop. It's a coffin. <laughs> it's a coffin, it's and the coffin. coffin is no longer coffin. <laughs> because he threw... That's perfect. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah. I think I might have to lengthen that a little bit to get the more detail in there. <laughs> Bax and Nagel in the morning on Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. Here's your Western Mass News first. 638 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-in bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. His local radio icon, Steve Nagel. Thanks, Max. A chase involving a stolen vehicle ended with the arrest of four teenagers and left one police officer injured in Springfield on Tuesday morning. According to Ryan Walsh, at approximately 10.15 a.m., officers were called to the area of Bay and Dartmouth Streets for a gun call, stating that an occupant of a Kia was pointing a shotgun out of the window. Shortly after police received the call, officers located the suspected vehicle on State Street and observed an occupant pointing a gun out the window. When officers attempted to stop the vehicle, it sped off recklessly, eventually losing sight of officers. A detective later spotted the vehicle near Catherine Street and tried to stop it. The driver continued at high speeds through a construction zone, causing an officer working the detail to jump out of the way to avoid being hit. The chase continued to St. James Avenue, where the officers saw the vehicle stop and its four occupants exit before noticing a police cruiser and getting back into the car. Oh. Wow. The School's out, kids! Yeah, 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 that's not the way school should end. The uh, vehicle continued speeding down St. James Avenue and was later spotted by an officer on Carew Street. The suspected vehicle sideswiped the officer's cruiser, causing the car to roll over before landing on its wheels. All four occupants then attempted to run away on foot. When the 22 News crew arrived, that's when things took a turn for the good. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's when this crime was solved. <laughs> yeah, like, like, there's, like there's some gangbanger out there going, Oh, man, it's the 22 News crew. Get out of here before they <laughs> describe us all inaccurately. Yeah, yeah, that one guy had a tattoo of a teardrop on his face. It was crazy. I sure hope they don't give any uh, you know, updates after the fact. My mom had a Kia. Didn't do anything like that. I sure hope they don't update anybody with any information. So when the 22 News crew arrived, multiple police cars surrounded the area and, and the vehicles involved were being towed away. 22 News... Oh, we missed it. Oh, man. Why couldn't you have any action when we were here? Wouldn't it be crazy? I mean, I'm going on a way out on a limb here, but wouldn't it be crazy if you found out after the fact that this high-speed chase was stopped by none other than Brian Lapis? Lapis gets out of the 22 news news truck. He flashes those big muscular calves, and all of a sudden, the car spins wildly out of control, actually, he, and it's Lapis that saves the day. Actually, he puts his calf out and trips the car. That's how it rolled over. Yeah, it rolls over very, right. very uh, like a, like a team like And then the, uh, the news crew spoke with an eyewitness about what he saw. Ah. What'd you see? <laughs> and he says, oh, I saw a police coming from the opposite way, and the stolen car was going this way. His car crashed either. His car crashed each other opposite way, and the stolen car went into the air and flipped four times. End quote. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I still like the idea of Lapis uh, putting this thing to an end. Yeah, I think uh, him and uh, Strep Strep Throat. 
could do that. I see strep throat, uh, you know, walking out with a with a cape, like a, like a super, like an SM super meteorologist, and he just you know barges right out of there and and stops it with his bare hands. Starts doing Doppler uh, spells and right and, and uh, doing uh, wizardry. <laughs> Does the whole thing before a green screen? Yeah, yeah, well, and, and successfully rounds up all the criminals. See, I can see it. Totally see it. The driver was arrested on the twelve hundred block of Carew Street, while the other three occupants were caught on Fordham Street. The officer whose cruiser was struck was injured and is currently being evaluated in a nearby hospital. The vehicle was reported stolen, and I'm sure that officer is okay now. Two days later, this is Let's why updates so. are important. It would be nice to yeah. know the uh, the officer is in good health. The uh, vehicle was reported stolen, and the driver was identified as a 16-year-old boy. The passengers included a 16-year-old girl and two 15-year-old boys. Due to their ages, their names and booking photos are not being released, and officers were unable to immediately locate the firearm. The incident remains under investigation by the Springfield Police. Now, was the uh, driver uh, a licensed driver in this situation? I don't think so. Or was he uh, still waiting to take his road test? Uh, I believe he had just passed the permit. Test. Are you sure? Yeah. So has he gone on his on roads yet? Because you know they'll they'll screw you insurance if you don't take those things. Well, he failed this lesson. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Uh, a moment in time, Pats fans will remember forever. Tom Brady has been inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame. What a delight to watch that only on a cell phone. Fans were there all afternoon yesterday, excited to see the surefire first ballot Hall of Famer get inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame. 22 News was there on the red carpet to catch all the action. Uh, according to NBC Boston, the induction was chosen to be one Wednesday because of the two numbers that are most associated with Brady, which are his six Super Bowl champions and his uniform number 12. So they oh, did it June 12th. About that. Yeah. You see who else was there last night? Who? Serving as like a like an announcer MC-ish kind of thing? No. Fitzy. Really? Yes. Oh, see, he, How about that? he deserves to be that. I'll too. tell you what, that youngster has really turned things around in his he, life. He might go somewhere with that career that he's got. <laughs> Fans tailgating the special event, such as uh, Troy Burke from Arizona, uh, has told 22 News, I took a red-eye flight this morning from Arizona. I'm tailgating with the Silver Bullet. It's going to be an unbelievable night. Lots of celebrities, all the fans, former players. I already met Ty Law and got his signature. This will be the biggest Brady event until he goes to Canton. It's right. Who wants to do nose beers before the big show? <laughs> Mister, I've been up all night on the plane. Yeah. I just flew in from Arizona, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> you see? Yeah. The uh, night started with the red carpet full of his uh, former teammates, friends, and family members. Brady's career spanned, uh, uh, spanned 20 seasons with the New England Patriots, where he led the team to six Super Bowl champs, 17 a AFC titles, 219 regular season wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know who he is. Robert Kraft waived the uh, usual four-year waiting period typically required before inducting players into the Patriots Hall of Fame for the three-time MVP. Several former teammates, such as Julian Edelman, Randy Moss, Rob Gronkowski, uh, Devin McCourty, and more also attended the ceremony. Wednesday night ceremony was held inside Gillette under the uh, Super Bowl banners that Brady brought to New England. Nah, that's great. Yeah. Nah, that's great. It's a good time. It's too bad it wasn't uh, televised on actual television. It was only being streamed, but ah, what are you going to do? Why wasn't it? Well, I guess that's a regionalized thing, I guess. It's, it's right? a, yeah, it's a regional thing, but, you know, I mean, it was it was just exclusive to Patriots.com, which I thought was, you know, like, you know, all the people would like to have seen. You know, maybe they're going to go back and and trim it down, kind of like they did with the, uh, the, the Tom Brady roast. Was it free to stream? You didn't have to pay for it, did you? No, no, no. We, we, no, we didn't pay. But it was like, I would kind of like to have uh, seen that before the Celtics game began. I don't blame you, you know? I don't know. I had to watch it on a five-inch screen. It was disappointing. Well, you're used to five inches. Oh, really? Yeah, really. 5.25. <laughs> okay, 5 .25, I mean. <laughs> okay uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll give you an extra quarter. Yeah, thanks. I'm being generous. That's for sure. Uh, your Pioneer Valley forecast today, it is going to be sunny with a high of 86. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds, perhaps a shower or two with a high of 82. It's 53 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, oh, yeah. Four. The Rock 102 Golf Club is available now at rock102.com.
presented by Max's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Your grilling destination. Weber, Big Green Egg, Uni Pizza Ovens, and Traeger Wood-Fired Grills. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Well, folks, I can't speak for everybody, but it sure would have been nice to watch that Tom Brady retirement party last night on something larger than my phone. I mean... I suppose I could have driven to Foxborough, watched everything play out on that gigantic video screen in the end zone, but I chose to stay home and watch some of the events on a largely obsolete iPhone device, which is no longer supported at the Genius Bar. Nevertheless, Tom Brady is now a member of the New England Patriots Football Hall of Fame, and he's also been the last guy to ever be allowed to wear a number 12 Patriots jersey since that has now been officially retired. Of course, everybody was out there. Mr. Kraft, Bill Belichick, more than 100 former teammates, Drew Bledsoe, John Bon Jovi, the guy that won tickets from Rock 102, Fitzy from TinyNews.com, and of course, Tom Brady himself was also there. You know who wasn't there? A camera crew that might have been able to air the ceremony live at a local television station. Instead, the ceremonies are being streamed exclusively on the Patriots website, which is fine if your internet provider is providing you with swiftly running service and if you are watching it on something slightly larger than a five-inch screen that you are holding in your hand. But hey, (laughs) why be be bitter? I mean, it was a day for Tom Brady, and for me, the greatest highlight came when Tom Brady turned to Bill Belichick and said, quote, it wasn't me, it wasn't you, it was us. Let me be crystal clear. There is no coach in the world that I would rather play for than Bill Belichick. Now, isn't that nice? There's no other coach you'd rather play with than Bill Belichick. Unless you happen to be Bruce Arians of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and you can win another Super Bowl. But then after that, all bets are off. But again, why split hairs? Tom Brady is now a member of the Patriots Football Hall of Fame and nobody else can wear his shirt. And whether you were in the stands or fighting traffic or struggling to watch it on your phone, it was a very special night all around. And really, isn't that what truly matters? I suppose it is. But hey, enough of my yappin' sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. You know, you got an Ego mower and an Ego strim, uh, a string trimmer. They, they use the same battery. It fits them both. Ego battery-powered outdoor equipment from Rockies. Mowers, blowers, trimmers, outdoor power without the noise, without the hassle of gasoline. Go Ego with Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 710 and Billy Squire with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's going to be a really nice day today and warm. Sunny and a high of 86. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds. Uh, could see a scattered shower or two with a high of 82. It's 53 right now in downtown Springfield. You're going to get a chance to win tickets to see Roger Daltrey a little bit later on uh, this hour. So make sure you're listening for that. He's going to be uh, coming to Tanglewood, and we'll give you all the details about that show. Hey, you know, I've been, uh, I've been watching a lot of TikToks, as I do. Every day. Well, that's where you get the news. It's true. And uh, this uh, this Karen Reed case, have you have you followed anything about this? A little bit. I know, uh, like, Turtle Boy has uh, done uh, an extensive job. And he's a credible source. Well, he is. You know, he's got a lot of followers. He's But, but the problem with, with his thing is that it's like in 240, part 356. <laughs> Now I'm the kind of guy who didn't who still hasn't watched Breaking Bad. Yeah. So for me to go back and read all of those things and you know, I've been seeing the things come up on the news feed uh, that he of uh, videos he posts and things like that. And it does seem to be uh, a pretty wacky case that they got going on here with the thing. Uh Defense attorneys for a woman accused of leaving her Boston police officer boyfriend for dead in a snowbank grilled the lead investigator Wednesday about a series of offensive and inappropriate texts he wrote about the suspect during the investigation. This is a prime example, by the way, of if you think that no one will ever read your text messages to somebody else, yeah. wait till you go to court. <laughs> and they will. Then you have to testify about it. Massachusetts State Trooper Michael Proctor also acknowledged that he was friends with several... Oh, wait, did I miss a part? No, you, oh, you're there. Massachusetts State Trooper Michael Proctor also acknowledged that he was friends with several witnesses, including the brother of the man who hosted the house party where John O'Keefe's body was found outside in January of 2022. The defense also criticized Proctor for sharing details of the investigation with friends and family on text exchanges and for texts in which he appeared to single out Karen Reed as responsible for O'Keefe's death less than 24 hours after his body was found. Prosecutors say Reed 
dropped O'Keefe off at the home of a fellow officer after a night of drinking and struck him while making a three-point turn. They then say she drove away. Her defense team argues that she has been framed and has questioned law enforcement's handling of the investigation. The text exchanges could raise doubts with the jury about Proctor's credibility and distract from some of the evidence he and other state troopers found. Before you ever went in the house, only having interviewed three folks, you had this case nice wrapped up, didn't you? Reads defense attorney Alan Jackson uh, Proctor uh, asked Proctor on Wednesday. By the way, that's not the guy who wrote the uh, Do You Remember song of Mon- about 9-11. That's a different Alan Jackson. Different Alan Jackson. Uh, Proctor responded to that his text comments were based on what investigators had found the first day, including O'Keefe's injuries, witness statements, an interview with Reed, a shoe, and pieces of clear and red plastic. Prosecutors argue that the pieces are from a broken taillight on Reed's SUV that they argue was damaged when she hit O'Keefe. Proctor, who first took the stand on Monday, acknowledged to the jury that he had called Reed names, including whack job, in texts to his friends family, and fellow troopers, and then he joked to supervisors about not finding nudes while searching her phone. He also admitted uh, texting his sister, and he wished that Reed would, quote, kill herself, which he claimed was a figure of speech and that emotions got the best of me. Mm. He apologized for some of the language he used, but insisted they had no influence on the investigation. No. Proctor's testimony came in the seventh week of the trial for Reed, who has pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder in the O'Keefe in O'Keefe's death. Experts said his testimony could significantly hurt the prosecution's case. The texts are appalling and wildly unprofessional, to put it mildly, and it's hard to imagine they won't hurt the prosecution's case in the eyes of the jury. Daniel Medwid, a law professor at Northeastern University, who's not involved in the case but chimed in on this. Reed's lawyers have alleged that O'Keefe was beaten inside the home, bitten by a family dog, and then left outside. They have portrayed the investigation as shoddy and undermined by the relationship investigators had with law enforcement agents at the house party. They also have suggested pieces of glass found on the bumper of Reed's SUV and a hair found on the vehicle's exterior may have been planted. Proctor acknowledged in his testimony that he is friends with the brother of Brian Albert and his wife, though he insisted it had no influence on the investigation and had never been to their house before O'Keefe's death. Brian Albert is a Boston police officer who hosted the party in Canton where O'Keefe's body was found in the front yard. Jackson got Proctor to acknowledge that he was drinking buddies with Albert's brother, Kevin Albert, who's a Canton police officer. He acknowledged they went out drinking several months after O'Keefe died, worked on a cold case together and communicated about coordinating aspects of O'Keefe ca- of the O'Keefe case, even though the Canton Police Department recused itself from the investigation due to Albert's brother's connection to the case. It's really hard to follow all of this. Yeah, some of this gets really confusing. But, you know, yeah. ultimately, when you listen to what uh, you know, Proctor is saying yeah. and, and his you know personal connections to people at this party, you start to think, well, yeah, maybe... There's a widening credibility gap to yeah. what this guy has to say. Proctor acknowledged he texted Kevin Albert about coordinating uh, the interviews. Oh, I missed a part. Sorry. Uh, Jackson got Proctor to acknowledge that he was drinking, buddies. Uh, you knew that he, above everybody else, should be completely removed from any contact with the investigation or the investigators, Jackson asked Proctor. Yet, when you wanted to coordinate uh, witnesses for interviews in this case, who did you turn to? And Proctor acknowledged that he texted Kevin Albert about coordinating those interviews, something experts say could also hurt the prosecution. One of the main justifications for having state police investigators separate and apart from local detectives is just that. They are theoretically separate and apart and may be able to investigate high-profile crimes with a degree of objectivity, Midwood said. The friendship between Proctor and the Albert family does create the appearance of a problem. You think? You know, but the more I read about all of this wacky stuff going on, Mm -hmm. that it just has become clear to me that it's just a bunch of drunks. And and I'm not saying that she's guilty or innocent. I'm just saying that they're all, it's it's every single one of them, including her, are part of this wacky bunch of uh, alcoholics and, and just, you know, trying to come up with a story yeah but you know when you're running an investigation i think most you know investigators would agree with this that you know you have to be extraordinarily careful to not be putting yourself in a position to lose credibility when you're asked to testify in court about the investigation and what you did to get 
uh, you know, evidence and how you kept the evidence. And, and I mean, there's so many, there's so many things involved. It reminds me a lot. I don't, I, I don't know if you remember this story because this happened many, many years ago. The Lorenzia Bembenek uh, case in Milwaukee years ago. Yeah. This is a woman who was accused of killing his or her husband's ex-wife. And uh, the, the husband was a was a cop. And it was investigated by his friends in the police department. Mm-hmm. And what they did is they implicated Lorenzia Bembenek in the killing of his ex-wife. And there, from the very beginning, it appeared that he was the one that killed his ex-wife, but then pinned it on Lorenzia Bembenek. And gotcha. she went to prison. She wound up escaping from prison. But it's there's a lot of very uh, interesting similarities between the way that case was investigated and the way this case was investigated whole not a whole lot of difference between you, you know i mean I, i'm a little hesitant to say a an old boys network but an old drinking fella network well, may have the ability that you need to prosecute a case but and, and all of these things all of these mistakes that are made by investigators is really hurting the ultimate cases there's a dead man a person died. Yeah. And because of all the shenanigans created by this investigation, including these text messages written, this guy's writing to his superiors and, and his buddies, I I don't know. I, I, I just, it just seems like everybody involved is some sort of like, wacky part to this yeah you know what i mean i mean neither one of us are on a on the jury here but you know when you read stuff like this yeah and you put yourself in the in the mindset of a juror sitting here and then you know listening to this guy get picked apart by the defense if i'm on a jury that's pretty powerful stuff if the guy is you know involved in the investigation is being uh, you know, well, picked apart like this. And then the state police, the next day after this guy's testimony, opens an internal affairs investigation against him going, hey, maybe we should look into this guy. Yeah, and maybe. See, maybe he's not on the up and up kind of thing. But uh, it's a pretty, it's it's an interesting case, and it'll be interesting to see how the whole thing plays out. And, of course, it's like a media frenzy now. P- people are going nuts over this thing. Yeah. Well, and it's like the modern-day soap opera when you have court testimony now. Isn't that weird how that used to be? I think it all started with the OJ thing, where there was like, uh, what, what channel was? I think it was it was, e. it was, it was Court TV. A- Court e. TV E had it. Yeah, I mean, there were a number of channels that were running it and, all day. And before that, you never really saw like full live on trials. That was like well, the Court TV kind of thing. It uh, was a Court TV kind of thing, but like the Menendez trial was televised. Yeah, yeah there, I mean, there, there have been other cases that were that were televised, but nothing to the degree of an OJ. That that hasn't happened before and it really hasn't happened since. But that has all moved to the the internet now. Like, yeah. you know, with the clips and you know, remember the Johnny Depp trial? Oh Every yeah. Every day you were hearing different, you know, news clips and all that stuff. But even that pales in comparison to the uh, the OJ oh, trial. Oh yeah, I mean, we're talking about a murder in this in this case. Or maybe not even a murder. It could have been an accidental death. I I don't, don't know. know. But but that's the thing, you know, there's so many moving parts to this thing that it gets confusing. I don't know. I don't I, know if I could sit through 326 parts of what I know. <laughs> he's done a lot of work. I mean, he's done a lot of research on on all this on all this stuff. Yeah, as opposed to shining the spotlight on his own problems. Well, you know, listen, everybody got everybody's got their own their own issues. I got issues, you got issues. Maybe the, not as good, maybe not as uh, juicy. Not, yeah, that turtle boy issues. No, no. Although I am, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's seven twenty one with Bax and Dangle on Rock one hundred two. Rock one hundred two, Springfield's classic rock. It's seven twenty eight, and Paul McCartney on Rock one hundred two. Uh, Dan Brown has the full forecast for you. Uh, we got those. Uh, we got those uh, Roger Daltrey tickets to give away a little bit later on. All right, going to Tanglewood. Yep. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's a, you know, you know that that's like one of those things. If you're in Massachusetts, they they say you should go at least once in your life to Tanglewood. Yeah. But there's a there was a list I saw that came out uh, the other day of the top twenty biggest tourist traps in America, and Massachusetts had one on the list. Guess which one it was? Which one? What's the biggest tourist trap in the state? 
The uh, Basketball Hall of Fame? No, no, oh. no, no, no. Worse, than, much worse than that. That floating island over on Island Pond Road? No, no, no. The biggest one. The the big man, the big white man at the uh, was down at the Mayflower Marathon. Oh, pl- come on. Everyone t- no, it's Plymouth Rock. The biggest oh, tourist oh, trap oh, oh. in the state of Massachusetts. Well, I... I, I I don't get out much. I would go to I would go to Tanglewood uh, fifteen times a year before I'd want to go back to Plymouth Rock once every decade. Really? Yeah. What are you talking about? I, I'd love to go hang out in that town. In Plymouth? Yeah. There's a great roast beef restaurant there. In Plymouth, they make roast beef sandwiches. That's all they make is roast beef sandwiches. Really? Now you're gonna make me look it up, Bax. <sighs> roast beef, Plymouth. I ate there. It was good. It Angelo's good. famous roast beef. And, we, and, and number one on the South Shore, baby. Really? Yeah. You get it to uh, the the roast beef, the three way. You can get the uh, the three way. Oh, that's good. Man. Yeah, that's that's really good with the gravy and the melted cheese. Oh and everything. yeah, oh, dude. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. The au jus. Oh, that's awesome. That's when you sneeze on the sandwiches. The au jus. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I, I'll head out to Plymouth. Yeah. I'll go see that rock if I can eat a good roast beef sandwich. I would skip the rock and go right to the roast beef, to be honest with you. Having seen the the rock and going, where's the rest of it? Uh, I'd rather just go right to the, uh, the the roast beef place. Speaking of uh, good food, we went to uh, we went to Great Horse last night. You it was a me. fancy little affair for the uh, the Springfield Thunderbirds. Yeah, and uh, going to Great Horse, whew, what a dump that place is, huh? Uh, no, actually, it's quite uh, spectacular in every possible really? way, shape, and form. Oh, yeah. Oh, I go up there. They got all this bougie stuff and this beautiful view of the entire Pioneer Valley. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, man. That place, that place will close up before you know it. No, actually, I don't think it will. It's expanding every single year and getting I, larger and larger. I, I'm completely joking. It's actually one of the nicest places I've ever been to. No, it yeah, it, uh, yeah. it it is. And yet, I you know, I have uh, I have. It's been a while since I've uh, mentioned this, but uh, you know, I have been uh, uh, suggesting for quite a long time uh, that I would make an excellent member of uh, of Great Horse, and I would be more than happy to accept a complimentary lifetime membership. I mean, it's very close to my house. Uh, I think I'd make a wonderful member. I'd be like a like a Walmart greeter of that place. For some reason, I picture you at that place as like a, a cousin Eddie showing up at the pool with all the families around, mm-hmm. trying to enjoy a nice afternoon, and you've got uh, you've got flippers on, and you've yeah. got uh, scuba gear, like mm-hmm. you're going to go into the pool. I, I, I picture... Slamming back natty daddies before you get to the pool. Steve, I'm a lot more sophisticated than I think you realize. You think so? Mm, No, not really. But I'm just saying that because I still want the complimentary lifetime membership. Don't you live a stone's throw away from that place? Uh, It would have to be a very light stone, but yes, uh, I live within within a a, a reasonable distance. Somebody said, "Well, why why don't you why don't you just walk here?" I'm like, (laughs) "I'm not gonna walk up those hills." That's that's got to be torture for you. What? To, to drive, drive by, by it every day, place every day, and say, you know what? I'll never be good enough to to make it to that club. You know, I was good enough to play at the old Hamden Country Club. Oh, that was oh, you, you know, I what? was I was I was within that uh, within that yeah. time, you know, that time and space. I can't believe they redesigned that beautiful building. No, I think what they did uh, it was ultimately uh, so much more spectacular than anyone could ever possibly dream of, but yet I still see no complimentary. The, uh, where was the historical commission uh, saving Hamden Country Club from being renovated into this bougie place? I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe that was offered as a possibility. Yeah, where were the protesters going, hell no, we- keep Hamden Country Club, we love this place. They have uh, they have turned that uh, whole parcel of land around. Yeah. They truly have. Well, <laughs> I don't know. The way it looked up there last night, I can't see it being open too much longer. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll be around for a bit. I bet. It's 734. News is next to Rock 102. Here's your Western Mass News first alert. Inventory online at FordNorthampton.net. 737. With Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news. It's brought to you by Aquatique Pools. Maintain your pool all summer long with state-of-the-art water testing. Stop by their showroom at 730 Union Street in West Springfield. 
Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Banks. Western Mass News has learned about a terrifying situation that unfolded last Friday at a middle school in Holyoke with concerns that a student had a gun. The incident took place at the Claire P. Sullivan Middle School on Friday during the school's field day. We're told it was pure panic and chaos when, when, when students heard one of their peers had a gun and police responded to the scene. The parents we spoke to, we spoke with told us their children are now traumatized by what they saw. Western Mass News spoke with the mother of a sixth grader who attends the middle school. Uh, she uh, said that she was at work on Friday when all of a sudden she started getting a text message from her son saying there had been an incident and that he's very scared and needs her to come get him right away. The parent said, uh, I called him immediately, and that's when he told me he had witnessed a student being chased and then tased to the ground. That made him very scared because he wasn't sure what was being pulled for the taser. He had no idea until he saw the kid fall to the ground. After that phone call, it was radio silence. She said the school was put on lockdown, and she was unable to get any calls into the school. The phone lines weren't working. Each number just kept repeating and repeating and repeating, and I wasn't able to come Mm -hmm. get him because the school was on lockdown because most of the parents were calling the school. That's probably what plugged up the lines, because this right. is probably the, uh, in the only one. That would also explain why you're just hearing about this on a th- the, thir- the following Thursday. As uh, anyone who has lived or traveled on Jarvis Avenue in Holyoke knows, the area where Sullivan is located is full of cellular dead zones, including inside of the school. So when the kids were brought into the building, they were no longer able to contact their parents to let them know they were okay. The mother expressed her concern, saying, I understand they need to have all the information first, but this situation was so different than any other minor lockdown they've had. Once the teachers who were in the rooms with these kids saw them on their phones, somebody should have realized, hey, a robo-email, a robo-text, a robo-call needs to go out to every uh, everybody with a little information. That it's, does go a long way. i got to tell you, it's hard to disagree with that. You yeah. know, if, you, if, it's, if, it's, if it's your kid in that school... And you can, and you're not be able to find out any information. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a, a more than annoying. Uh, they reached out to Holyoke Public Schools for comment, and the statement that was provided was: the phone lines at Sullivan School remained open all day Friday. School staff responded to calls from family members throughout the afternoon. There's no truth to the allegation that someone from Sullivan School turned off the phone line to prevent calls from coming in. It's possible that call volumes made it impossible. Like I just said, yeah, uh, you know, too many people calling. Families were advised via emails on Friday and Monday that their and their children could seek support from school counselors. In addition, Sullivan School also sent teams of counselors and administrators to classrooms on Friday and again on Tuesday to check in with the students. Counseling support remains available for any students or families who requested from the office. No gun was found, and no tasers were used. So is this all a big uh, hoax? I don't know what happened. Here, here's the problem. When you have a bunch of kids, yeah, you know how it was on the schoolyard. Sure. Uh, the telephone game, the rumor thing. Uh, oh, I know. You're witnessing people running around. So you tend to either make your own conclusion or you're discussing with other people who have come up with different conclusions as to what just happened, and that's how the story gets out of... Uh, you know, misconstrued. I don't know what happened here. They, that's the other thing. They haven't said what exactly happened. And again, it's almost a week. You know, it's it's six days later. And you don't have any answers. And we're probably not going to. Probably not. Uh, three high school staff members from Barnstable may lose their jobs after two students were left behind during a field trip. Wow. Oh, wah. no. The Barnstable School Committee is considering a recommendation to fire Alec and Hope Taylor and Rafaela Amilda. All three high school staff members have been on administrative leave since April, shortly after they took 22 students to a a Bell of the Ball event in Boston. (laughs) (laughs) The uh, nonprofit provides free prom dresses and accessories to students in needs. When the bus left to head back to Barnstable some 70 miles away, two students were left behind. Workers at the event ended up driving the students home. After an investigation, the district superintendent recommended the Taylors and Almeida be fired. However, uh, community members have rallied around the educators and pushed to save their jobs, saying this is a teaching moment. Aaron, well, here's my question. Why were they left behind? That's what I'm trying to find out. I mean, were these, were these, were, was everybody told, hey, be by the buses at a certain time, and for whatever reason, these two kids didn't? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't even say why they were left behind. Uh, 
but the people are rallying around them, and the Taylor's daughter says her parents have taken responsibility for what happened and deserve a second chance. The superintendent says a resolution to the incident will come, but it will take time. I know you don't want to leave any child behind. I totally understand that. I get it. It makes sense. Uh huh. But if you tell a kid, even an adult, because we had it, we had this problem years ago. We took a bunch of listeners to a to a Bruins game, mm-hmm. and so it was. Uh, we t- we took a we took a uh, like a like a King Ward bus. Yeah. And we went to Boston, and we watched the game, and then we said, "Listen, everybody has got to be at the bus by eleven fifteen. Not eleven seventeen, not eleven thirty, eleven fifteen. That's yeah. when the bus is, is being pulled out. They're on well, a schedule. We're yeah. on a schedule. The bus is on a schedule. We all have to leave. Well, of course, there was one guy who was pre gaming on the bus before the bus mm-hmm. and during the game. Well, guess who didn't show up at eleven fifteen? That guy. That guy. So we waited until eleven thirty for that guy to show up and he never showed up. So Yeah. Ipso fatso, we buzzed right out of there because it wasn't like it wasn't clear to everybody when to show up. So now you wonder, well, would this have the same? Was could this have been the same issue here in uh, in, in in Boston with these kids? Yeah. Could tell you if you're not yeah. going to be by the bus by a certain time, this is what happens. Well, I mean, you're talking about an adult. These are children. These are. You know, whether they're teenagers or not, uh, that should be more responsible in finding out where they need to be at a certain time. Buses wait for no one, Tardy. Well, that's what I'm saying. And uh, there was a time where I went on a bus trip down to the old Yankee Stadium. And we went to one of the last, a friend and I went, we signed up for this bus trip. And it was the, one of the last games at the old Yankee Stadium. Right. I think it was the last game, and it wound up getting rained out. It was against the Tampa Bay Rays. Mm-hmm. Didn't really matter. We all get to the stadium. We're walking around, waiting for the cause games now delayed because of the rain. Eventually, it gets canceled. But we're all walking around uh, looking at things. And then uh, they said, well, the game's canceled. we got to get back on the bus. It was kind of a big pain in the butt because you get all the way down there, and then you got to drive three hours back, and you didn't even see anything. Right. And then they're waiting, and then they're waiting maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. And we're like, whoa, what's going on? Well, we're waiting for this guy. Well, somebody comes out and goes, yeah, he got arrested. Uh, <laughs> he was trying to steal like a piece of piping, like a, like a pipe cover okay. from Yankee Stadium so he would have that. A memento. His, of a, a memento, if you will. Well, he got, he got arrested. The bus, sorry, see ya, we're leaving, we gotta go back, all these yeah. people have nothing to do with you, and all their cars are waiting in the parking lot. Well, what could possibly go wrong with a, someone who has been abandoned in the Bronx? No, nothing's ever happened. I know of no situation that, that ever turned out in a negative way after something like that. I know people who have driven around the Bronx and got lost driving, to which they were pulled over by a police officer, uh... And which he said, uh, I'm sorry, was there a reason why you pulled me over? And he goes, yeah, you don't belong here. Get out. <laughs> he could tell you were from out of town. Like, uh, this isn't a place for people who don't live here. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes yeah. it's uh, for the best. Your uh, Pioneer Valley forecast today, it is going to be mostly sunny with a high of 86. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds. Could see a shower or two, high of 83. It's 57 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah. Uh, yeah. Factory discounts and low finance rates on trucks. Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock at 753 in the Rolling Stones of Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be a nice day today. Sunny and a high of 87. Could be a little humid, too. Uh, tomorrow, a uh, mix of sun and clouds. Could see a spot shower or two. High of 83. It's 57 right now in downtown Springfield. You know how we were talking about uh, no, that no. iron... That Iron Man competition over the weekend? Yeah, oh, yeah. We yeah. talked about, you know, like a 1,400 athletes running, biking, and swimming throughout uh, the city. Yes. And uh, you and I had uh, discussed in uh, pretty graphic detail that uh, the Connecticut River is a swirling cesspool of human waste and rotting fish. You don't say. Well, uh, yesterday in Mass Live, organizers of Iron Man uh, 70.3 Western Massachusetts tested the water in the Connecticut River before the triathlons 
1.2-mile swim from North Riverfront Park to, uh, to Riverfront Park a few blocks away. They tested it before anybody went into the river to swim during the Ironman competition. And what they said was that the samples that were collected were found to be well beneath both Ironman and state requirements. That is what ah. the Ironman said, that uh, no amount of human waste is too much human waste for the Iron Man. Oh, really? Yes. These are acceptable levels of human waste and rotting fish. Now, would any of them uh, dip a cup in there and uh, perhaps drink a glass of water? That is uh, not what it is saying. How, how confident are they that it's not contaminated? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, nobody bothered to put a cup of crystal brown Connecticut River water into their mouths voluntarily well then uh, you're not really proven to me that the water's safe well i you know you i first drink it that's what i would say to those people. i was kind of thinking the same thing yeah. it's like well okay well what is what would be the acceptable amount of human waste in a waterway for an iron man competition and where's the you know, where's that threshold where does that where does that stand how much human waste is in his acceptable amount I don't know. That is a good question, though. That's like a good threshold. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're cannonballing into the collecting vats at Bondi's Island. You know, you're not doing that. Although you're close. uh, But you're not that far away. I mean, there's there's, there's a lot going on in that river. And I'm just just wondering, you know, what the... You know, what is that line that says today is a good day to swim as opposed to today is a toxic day to swim? Well, you got to have poo flags up. (laughs) I suppose. If there's like one brown flag, that's safe. But if there's five brown flags, then it's a no-go. Then you don't don't jump in the river. you don't go in there. Then you take the bridge. Yeah, you put them right up on top of the South End Bridge. Yeah. That's That's how everybody in the area knows. Oh, it's a it's a it's a poo too today. <laughs> we can't have you swim in this, but we will have you zip line under the Memorial Bridge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, Roger Daltrey is going to be at Tanglewood on June twenty second. That's going to be a hell of a show with his very special guest, Katie Tunstall. And uh, we happen to have a pair of tickets for you to see Roger Daltrey at Tanglewood up in the Berkshires for a wonderful concert of delicious music. Why are you talking it like that? Because I just like saying it like that. Anyway, uh, 10th caller right now at 293-1021. Good luck to you. Maybe you'll be a big, fat winner. Maybe you'll even see James Taylor in the crowd. Oh, I don't. Uh, I don't well, he lives right around the corner. There. True, but yeah. I don't know if he just uh, just you know pops up and shows up at Tanglewood without demanding to get on the stage. Wait, if you were James Taylor, wouldn't you be like talking to every uh, artist that comes through there? Just like walking over in your backyard. Right, let's say you're uh, you know you're you're doing James Taylor stuff like. Playing croquet in your backyard because yeah, but maybe kind of thing about what I would think James Taylor would do. But maybe James Taylor is just like one of these guys that you know just likes to like a nice quiet day at the coffee shop, yeah. or maybe lunch at the Red Lion or something. You know, maybe go to Country Curtains or something. But he's not going to go, you know, full bore out to every show and you know, you know, shaking babies and you know, signing autographs. You know what I would really like to see. James what? Taylor go into Lee to Route 102 Liquors and buy himself a nice big fat King Cobra and just drink it on the lawn of Tanglewood. Right out of the bag. Yeah. And then yell out, pimps up and hose down, bitches. Yeah. It's Roger Daltrey on the stage with that <laughs> other gal. I can totally see James Taylor doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to hop in my low rider and rotate these tires, hmm, bitches? It's 758 of Rock 102. Springfield's Classic. 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 813 and Guns and Roses with Max and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be a nice day today. Sunny and a high of 86. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds. Could see a shower or two. High of 82. It's 61 right now in downtown Springfield. Do you? And hey. now. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. Moran Studios in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts. It's Open Line Thursday. A sneaky surprise open line Thursday. Steve's well, not going to be here tomorrow, so yeah. we might as well squeeze it in now. Might as well do it now. How exciting. So here's the rules. 293-1021. Uh, if you've you never know you heard open line Friday, the rules for open line Thursday are very similar. Uh, no foul language, no hate speech, and try not to act like a total dink. If you can do those three things, 
we could get through this without too much of a bother. Have you met our audience? Uh, I know. I'm asking a lot. That's why I feel a need to, to explain it every week we do this. Yeah, but even that is just a little too much information for a Thursday morning at 8.15. No, I know. All right, let's uh, go to the phones and see what we got here. Uh, Rock 102. Uh, Rock 102. Oh, nah. Ryan out loud. Okay, let's try this. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hi. Hi. Who's this? Peyton. Caitlin? Peyton. Oh, Peyton. How you doing, Peyton? Nice to see you. Or hear you. Hear you. It's nice to hear you. Nice to hear you, too. Oh, Oh, nice to hear you, too. You you have yourself a great day, Peyton. Uh, Kim Kardashian stuff's coming up soon. (laughs) Okay. All right. Oh, it's a, uh, I, I, you get them while they're young. I you know? love when parents yeah. put their children up to terrible things. Uh, Rock 102. Oh, come on. Rock 102. Come oh, on. for God's sakes. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, it's your boy Cody. Happy Thursday. Happy yeah, thank Thursday, you very much, Cody. Cody. Have a good one, fellas. That's it. Okay, very That's good. Thank it. you. It's going very well so far. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, good morning, guys. It's Vince the Plumber. Hey, Vince the Plumber. We're, we're throwing you off today, aren't we? We're doing it on a Thursday. I, dude, I love it. No, I absolutely love it, dude, because I, I wasn't for sure if I was going to call in tomorrow. It's yeah. my birthday tomorrow, so I was thinking uh, maybe I'd uh, play hooky from work tomorrow, you know? Oh, there you go. So you wouldn't be, like, uh, changing ball cocks or uh, wax rings or anything like that? No, no drain cocks, no ball cocks, no cocking tomorrow. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. All, right. All right, don't <laughs> test, don't test the limits now. <laughs> oh All no, right. we're talking about cocking of the ceiling of the tubs. You of know. course, we're talking about that stuff. That's right. All right, well, All very right. good. Well, you enjoy your birthday tomorrow. All right, guys, you guys have a good one. All right, you too. Okay, Rock One Hundred Two. Good morning. Who's this? Yeah, Chris. Hey, Chris, what's up? How you doing? Good. What's up? How's your day going? So far, so good. Kind of waiting around for you to say something, but what's on your mind? You guys have breakfast yet? No, uh, no, it's uh, not yet. Why? Okay. Any vacations planned? <laughs> well, I'm taking a week. I think we're both taking a week off in uh, in July. Yeah, I'm taking a That's day good. trip up to uh, Chester. Yeah. Big trip. Well, enjoy yourselves. All, All right. right. Well, thank you very well, thanks much. Thanks for calling. Okay, very good. Yeah. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, it's the Hawkman. How are you guys doing? Hey, the hey, Hawkman. Hawk How are you? I'm doing awesome. I just have a few shout-outs to do if that's okay. You go right ahead. It's my mother's birthday today. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Marcy. Happy birthday. I don't know if she can hear you, but yeah, that's cool, man. But uh, another shout-out is... Oh, sounds like her microphone is disabled. <laughs> But she has a hard time lifting it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, oh my God. that's terrible. That's terrible. All right. Well, so go ahead. What, what's, what, what now? I have another shout out to my friend, Kathy. No, Caitlin, who works at Bay State Wing Hospital. She works in the radiology department. And she did a great job taking care of the Hawkman. All right. Well, good. I'm and glad you're – hope you're okay. I don't know. I had a cat scan to see if I'm going to get any more diamond kidney stones, so. Oh. All right. Well, well hopefully. We hope you don't. Hey, do you guys want to buy my kidney stones? No. No, I'm, no I'm not really. There, no, buddy. we're all set. All right. All right, guys. Take care. All, all right. right. Good okay, talk. Good talk, good, good, good talk, Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Bro- uh, Rock 102, good morning, who's this? Hey, it's uh, it's the Big R here. Hey, what's up? Long time listener, first time caller. Oh, okay. very good. Welcome aboard. Yeah, my grandpa put me on to you guys, and I uh, loved it ever since. Oh, God, you think so old. Uh, How old are, are you? Say, I'm like 24. Oh, 24. And your grandpa put you onto the show, huh? <laughs> No, I'm really 13. That was a lie. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Very good. Makes sense. What can you do? Hey, what? I just want to say uh, you guys really brighten my day uh, every morning on my way to school. Awesome. All right. Cool. Glad we can help. Where you, you go? Where you go to school? Um, around. 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 Yeah, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, you have yourself a good week. 
All right. Uh, Rock 102. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing today? Uh, good. Good. Why do you sound like you're calling from a McDonald's speaker? Uh, I'm, I'm like car phone Bluetooth. Oh, ah, okay. yeah, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's on your mind today? Yeah, newly, newly retired. I'm enjoying retired life. 34 oh. years as a teamster. Do you have a T-shirt that says, uh, I may be retired, but I'm still full of time pain in the ass? Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you were a teamster? Yeah, 34 years. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So 59 and retired, you know? Beautiful. Good for you. You get yeah, that, you get that yeah. uh, Jimmy Hoffa weight, chain and weight? Uh, absolutely. I even know where the body is. <laughs> oh, uh, that's there what you they, go. That's what they do. Whatever you do, don't get into the maroon car. No, 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 I won't. I won't. All yeah, right. Definitely, well, definitely not, you know? Well, so, enjoy. Uh, well, enjo- listen, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't listened to you guys in a while, so I'm uh, a little bit behind on this. How is John O'Brien doing? Uh, I guess he's doing all right, uh, Wow, you've really been living under a rock, haven't you? <laughs> I yeah. Well, I I don't. Uh, I'm in areas a lot of times that um, that uh, I don't get rock 102. So gotcha, that's, that's gotcha. Right. But you now know. that you're retired, so what, you'll hear all the time. Yeah. Right. 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 So right. so he's doing all right, or yeah, know? yeah. As far as I know. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. That's good to know. All right. Well, all you right. guys enjoy. You guys enjoy your day. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take All care. right. Bye. Sounds good. All right. Let's try at least wow. uh, one more here, uh, please. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Is this? Hey, this is Jerry from uh, uh, I called, uh, I got a couple of uh, jokes for you. Okay, Jerry. Are, are, are they arable? Are they clean? Uh, I, I, I think so. Do they, they don't have any, they don't have any uh, vulgar words in them, right? No. no. All, right. All right. Okay. Well, All right. Lay, lay take on your us. best shot at it. Let's go. All right, well, the first one is, uh, why did the chicken cross the road? Why did the chicken cross the road? Get to the gay guy's house. Okay. All you right. know what? That's enough. All right, that's, hey, that's enough. Hey, I, 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 already, I already dumped that one. Uh, as, uh, very good. What, what's up with Thursday? I don't know. Yeah, There's take something... another one. Take one more one, one uh, before more? we get okay. off this. Uh, see if we can redeem ourselves here. Yeah. Yeah. Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Good morning. It's uh, Nick from Agawam. What's Hi, up, Nick, Nick from Agawam. Question, um, you guys were just talking about Joey Chestnut the other day. Yes. And uh, so I just I just was watching one of my favorite shows, The Amazing Race. And uh, he's, he's on a couple, I think two episodes or two seasons. I was wondering if you guys like, ever interviewed him on air about that. Oh, he's been in the, st- he's, well, not about that. He's been in the studio a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I was asking. So th- that'd be cool to get. Like an interview from him about that in the future. Well, um, the, I can't between, remember. I think between that, well, there's a couple of things. One, one, him being <laughs> barred from the Nathan's hot dog eating contest the other yeah, day. Yeah, that was that's a terrible impressive. story. But did you see what came up yesterday? He is going to be wow. in a head-to-head um, winner-take-all competition directly oh, with course. Kobayashi, and it's going to be Whoa. on Netflix. Whoa. Imagine wow. it makes your head explode that's, with possibilities, doesn't that's it? That's exciting. Yeah, I, you're I, damn I, right. I'm going to get through the weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. I'm telling you what. I think it's coming up in uh, in July. So uh, mark your calendar down. I'll I'll be watching it. Hey, All right, yeah. there you go. Take <laughs> you Take bet. Care. Okay. Well, there you go. That was an open line Thursday. <laughs> All right. That was that was something else. Huh? Maybe that's the reason why we do these on Friday. Why well, was it because nobody was prepared? Maybe that's what it is. We, didn't we just kind of we just kind of said, "Whoops, we're doing this today." We sprung it on everybody, and this is what you have. Now, oh, well, we're really sorry. It's eight. Really sorry. It's eight twenty-four on Rock One Hundred Two. Graduations, parties, wet. It's uh, eight twenty-eight with Bax and Nagel on Rock One Hundred Two. Uh, Dan Brown has the full forecast. Again, I I'm really sorry. <laughs> We keep getting these texts. WTF, you guys should do more open line often twice a week, Tuesday and Friday. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are you going to do? And uh, what's wrong with these, and then, you know, a, a, a term to describe people, uh, 
We can't control who calls in. No, we we really can't. And uh, and these things have uh, you know sometimes gone well, and sometimes yeah. it doesn't. That's that's the beauty of open lines. It's so dangerous. What do you want? A professional radio show with a producer? <laughs> okay, not getting at this one, place. You ain't don't getting one here. Not at this place. Hell's no. It's uh, eight twenty nine. We got news next to Rock one hundred two. Here's your Western Mass news first. <laughs> 833 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-in bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. His local. Thanks, Bax. A chase involving a stolen vehicle ended with the arrest of four teenagers and left one police officer injured in Springfield on Tuesday morning. According to Ryan Walsh, at approximately 10.15 a.m., officers were called to the area of Bay and Dartmouth Streets for a gun call stating that an occupant of a Kia was pointing a shotgun out of the window. Shortly after police received the call, officers located the suspected vehicle on State Street and observed an occupant pointing a gun out the window. When officers attempted to stop the vehicle, it sped off recklessly, eventually losing sight of the officers. Uh, a detective later spotted the vehicle near Catherine Street and tried to stop it. The driver continued at high rates of speed through a construction zone, causing an officer working the detail to jump out of the way to avoid being hit. The chase continued on to St. James Avenue, where the officers saw the vehicle stop and its four occupants exit before noticing a police cruiser and getting back into the car. The vehicle continued speeding down St. James Avenue and was later spotted by an officer on Carew Street. The suspected vehicle sideswiped the officer's cruiser, causing the car to roll over before landing on its wheels. Try explaining that to your insurance agent. And then uh, four homeless guys holding up signs with (laughs) eights and tens. Oh, he nailed that landing. Yeah, Look the, at that. The Russian judge was so harsh. Yeah. Oh, eight. Eight. I give that no more than a six. You know, all the many stupid things I've done in my life, mm-hmm. and there have been many, I've never done something this stupid. Stolen a car. You signed a contract to work here. <laughs> Even that, I would argue, is not nearly as stupid as what just went on yesterday on Bay Street. I mean, stealing a car, uh, yeah. hitting a cruiser, flipping it over, and then running away. You know, th- there's just so many dumb things a part of that whole experience that I can never actually say I have dabbled in that much stupidity in a single 24-hour span. I have. I worked with Dave Coombs. <laughs> Even that. No, no. Even I think that's that. the lowest I could go. Now, I, I yeah. know. I know. Yeah. I I hear you, but believe me when I tell you, you're you're not even you're not even in the same ballpark as these four idiots. Listen, if somebody said to me, "Would you like to uh, steal a car and send yourself on a police chase throughout the city of Springfield, uh, endangering the lives of many people, or hang out for four hours in a studio with Dave Coombs?" I will be going to jail for the rest of my life. <laughs> I can understand why yeah. that may seem yeah. like you're doing hard yeah. time. Right. Yeah, right. but that's not the way it goes. When the uh, 22 News crew arrived, multiple police cars surrounded the area and the vehicles involved were being towed away. Well, that was a pretty good observation. Yeah. Ah, the car was up on the flatbed. It was crazy. <laughs> 22 News spoke with an eyewitness about what he saw. I saw police coming from the opposite way, and this stolen car was going this way. Remember, it's like the uh, the scarecrow in *The Wizard of Oz*. Yeah, some idiots go this way. Yeah, others go this way. Some and pe- I'm the one who doesn't have a brain. And some people without brains do an awful lot of talking. <laughs> uh, that was from Ganesh Reddy. His uh, his car crashed each other opposite way, and stolen car went into air and flipped four times. That makes sense. <laughs> I don't know if that's a typo. Or they were actually quoting the person that they were interviewing. Well, usually if you're quoting somebody and there's a missing word or something that's indecipherable, it's usually something in parentheses that you just add, like, you know, articles or, you know, connecting words. They they, they write sick. Yes. S-I-C. Yes, right. To, to replace the word that was meant to be said, right? Isn't yeah. that what sick means? I'm going to guess this was a total uh, a yeah. matter of omission. Of course, the 22 News crew, it's just sick. S-I-C-K. Man, that story's sick. Look at that car. Landed on all fours after tumbling. Sick. Sick, dude. Sick. Yes, it is. It is sick. The uh, vehicle was reported stolen, and the driver was identified as a 16-year-old boy. The uh, passengers included a 16-year-old girl 
and two 15-year-old boys. Due to their ages, their names and booking photos are not being released. Officers were unable to immediately locate the uh, firearm. The incident remains under investigation by the Springfield Police Department. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to be in so much trouble when their mom finds out yeah. about this. They're going to go to bed without any supper. You were going to stand in the corner and think about what you just did to our insurance premiums. Uh, you realize what you've done? <laughs> for six years, we're going to be paying we for this. We have a surcharge now. $600 a year for your shenanigans. <laughs> and who do you think is going to pay for that? It ain't going to be your mom. Uh, she... Can Chen's hot skin? This is an article out of Mass Live, by the way. Okay. Uh, she Can Chen's hot skin was still blistering as he raced out onto a street in a residential neighborhood on September 30th of 2019, flagging down an off-duty police officer. As he testified this week in Hamden Superior Court against three men, he says broke into a house that served as an illegal marijuana grow operation. Chen broke down when he asked to lift his shirt and to show his still-modeled skin to a jury. He told detectives a group of men broke into the home he had grew, he had set up as a grow house with four dozen plants. Chen supposedly set up the operation to raise money for a high-end wedding for him and his longtime girlfriend. Oh, you know, listen, honey, I love you so much. I know you really want this fairy tale wedding. Let me just get into the drug dealing business. <laughs> Okay. Because I know we need some quick cash to uh, to pay for the open bar and for the the, the horse hunt, and the horse and carriage, the horse ride. and carriage, and for yeah. the top hat I'm going to get with my tux. He spent fifty thousand dollars to set the operation up in the city's East Forest Park neighborhood. Uh, that went awry as he was zip tied, beaten, and burned with a hot machete and set on fire, according to prosecutors. Jesus. It was an hours long ordeal until Chen ultimately rammed a door and escaped. Springfield police have said illegal grow operations lead to violence, and this is a prime example. 26-year-old Paul Gale, 20-year-old Malik uh, or Malik Erskine, and uh, 21-year-old Mark Kendall Johnson are being tried on charges of home invasion, kidnapping, mayhem, and extortion, among others linked to the attack. They have pleaded not guilty. Uh, during closing arguments, Hamden DA Jeffrey Schlemmer told the jury that Chen spent 79 days at a Boston's hospital burn unit. During that time, he was forced to relearn how to walk, talk, and swallow. He remains disfigured. Jesus. Chen, a New York resident, was not expected to survive the three-hour attack in, inside an, an unassuming home at 620 Roosevelt Ave. Instead, he spent months in a burn unit at a rehab facility following the alleged ambush. Uh, prosecutors say Chen's attackers beat him, broiled the blade of a machete, and then burned his skin before finally dousing him. Ugh. My God. They told jurors the alleged burglars are expected to come away with a large haul of fresh weed. Instead, they struggled to even find the drugs and instead extorted Chen for $4,000 wired to a Venmo account. Because nobody's ever going to catch you with an electronic payment. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, the defendants were caught on home videos uh, flitting in and out of the house in East Forest Park. Among the suspects was a Jamaican native, Dushan Simon, who testified that he was the one who set Chen on fire. Lawyers for the defendants and uh, said DNA evidence was skewed. A lawyer for Gail, a.k.a. Pookie, his name was Pookie, uh -huh. said his client was not at the home during the time of the attack. Surveillance video showed all the defendants in and around the house. Well, where is Pookie? Oh, well, Pookie's not at this house. Well, he's right there on the video. That's just somebody that looks like Pookie. What a sick story this is. It's a horrible story. And uh, the jurors are going to deliberate that uh, later on this morning. Crazy. He, Chen testified under a grant of immunity. Simon fled to his uh, native Jamaica after the incident, returned three years later, and helped the prosecution. The jury will continue deliberating this morning. So, um, I don't know if you saw this story. We haven't reported it yet. Uh, police officer Greg Bigda is back off the city payroll after a three-to-one vote by the uh, police commission early Wednesday evening. I didn't see that. Yes, commissioners voted by a majority to suspend Bigna without pay indefinitely two months after the Massachusetts Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission made a final ruling to decertify the veteran city officer after multiple appeals. Four members of the five-member Springfield Police Commission voted on Bigna's fate, and he is... Uh, he is not getting paid He's out. anymore. He's out. Big is undoubtedly the most beleaguered office uh, officer on the force in recent history after many years of a relatively charmed career, including a longtime one celebrated narcotics unit that took uh, a fall when the U.S. Department of Justice trained its sights on the unit. 
and they just said the word unit. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so uh, for those of you who have been following that story, uh, when, uh, you know, there were some problems with uh, him leaving his car out there and a couple of Utes stole it, uh, he said some bad things, and uh, if so, fat so, yada, 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 he is now no longer getting paid by the city. I wonder if he ever got to enjoy the food from the uh, takeout place. Um, I think he was picking something up, wasn't he? Was I think, he picking something up or is he ordering something? I believe he was picking something up. Yeah. But yet, he also picked up two utes and may have overstayed uh, his boundaries. What do you think he was eating? Grinders? I don't know. I really uh, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's not clear to me what he ordered. What's I don't really think that's the case. I, really, I don't really know if that's the issue here. All I know is uh, <laughs> as of uh, last night, he won't be able to afford takeout well, for a while. What does a certain personality type eat? Uh, you know, like the hungry man dinners. Do they have the angry man dinners too? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> We're giving that's... you an angry man dinner tonight. Right. Uh, yes, the inappropriate man dinner. Something that you're going to get really, really irritated and upset about. Oh, it's a delicious roast beef sandwich, but no mayonnaise. Ah! Damn it! <laughs> It's dry. <sighs> well, that's that'll be fourteen ninety. Oh, I left my keys in the car. Hang on one second. Hey, in my wallet. Wh- uh, where's, wh- my where's my car? car? <laughs> yeah, dude, where's my? It's it's the Springfield version of dude. Dude, where's, where's my, my car? cruiser? <laughs> yeah, dude, where's my cruiser? <laughs> Your Pioneer uh. Valley forecast today is going to be uh, sunny with a high of eighty six. Uh, tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds. Uh, could see a spot shower or two and a high of 83. It is 64 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. It- Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 852 and Van Halen with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Going to be a really nice day today. Sunny and warm, high of 86. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds. Could see a thunderstorm uh, perhaps in the afternoon with a high of 82. It's 65 right now in downtown Springfield. Did you uh, did you ever have a lemonade stand when you were a kid? No, I lived on a street where nobody ever passed by. Well, you know what? I wish somebody had taught me uh to do that i would maybe would have been a little bit better with finances throughout my life think of how you could have turned your life around if only you had any sort of business acumen well i couldn't have turned my life around for anything <laughs> but anyway uh there is a lemonade day uh coming up uh, in august uh, out in palmer and here in the studio with us this morning is uh, julia taylor and uh, andrew st george who is the uh, town of palmer recreation director good morning how are you good morning good doing morning. good so, first of all, tell us what uh, what Lemonade Day is all about. Yeah, so basically, Lemonade Day it's a it's an educational program designed to teach school age children entrepreneurial skills. So uh, they basically they get a curriculum, they learn how to budget for business, they learn how to handle the finances, and they learn how to actually you know kind of run a business from start to finish. Which I think is a great idea because they don't teach finance stuff to kids in school. I mean, there's a. L- you know, I think my kids were about sixth grade when, when like a local bank finally came in and said, you know, you can, you can open up accounts and this is how you balance a, a bank book and all that stuff. But there's really that's not very widespread. So I think this is kind of helpful, I would think. You're right. Yeah. And even where stuff like that exists, it's yeah. I mean, it's classroom. It's not real world. So this gives kids a chance to actually have hands on. And, you know, they're going to get those lessons. Country Bank is actually partnering with us to, to teach these those kinds of lessons, the the, uh, you know, the financial literacy uh, to the kids. Hmm. But again, it's a very big difference between learning it and doing it. So right. we're giving them the chance to do it. This is uh, Julia Taylor and uh, Andrew St. George from, uh, well, the Town of Palmer Recreation Director. But, you know, the uh, the Lemonade Day thing is actually something that's uh, that's national. It's all over the country. But this is this is specific for for folks in this area. Yeah, so there's actually uh, over 90 communities across the U.S. that, that do this. Uh, we'll be the first one in New England, as far as we know. Uh, but it's it's actually spread internationally as well. So, um, the intent is to have a successful lemonade day stand in Palmer this year, and then other communities around Western Mass, and then hopefully Eastern Mass as well, can take our blueprints and then do the same program in their town. But it's so. not about lemonade, right? Like, I mean, you could uh, I mean, a kid could come up with a really great idea, like and become the next Bill Gates, yeah. and all of a sudden that yeah. that came right out of Palmer. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Le- lemonade is the stepping stone, but Sky's the limit, right? 
Right. Don't so, d- don't project well, too I mean, much. Listen, for, yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, is it possible for like a fifty-seven-year-old man to show up to learn a thing or two about business? Yes, you could totally come and volunteer. Um, you can be an investor. To one, of I was the thinking more of a student because uh, I, sure. I, I could learn a lot yeah. with something yep. like this. Yes, never yeah. too old to learn. Although this program specifically would be geared towards school oh, age kids. Yeah, that's, uh, I, 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 I would. That would give me an unfair advantage, right? Maybe. I don't know. I, I think I think a lot of people would show up for the kids more than for you. <laughs> I would think so too. And you've also uh, you partnered up with uh, with Country Bank, right? Yes. Am I right about that? Yes. And what what are they w- w- providing? Um, for this? So they have a money management program that they're going to come in and teach the kids, as well as the Lemonade Day program that um, Andrew and I will be helping with. And they're going to team up, teach their financial literacy, um, hopefully have kids open bank accounts, and just pretty much learn how to manage money. Hopefully, at like the earliest age possible. So, so, uh, so what what is the age range for for kids to participate? So we're we're basically saying like five through seventeen, which is basically kindergarten straight through, so school mm-hmm. age. Okay, grades, and, what, and, what, and what day is actual lemonade day? So we're going to be doing it August twenty fourth, mm-hmm. uh, and it'll be basically like late morning into early afternoon is when the lemonade stands will be set up, probably like ten to one. And, all right, and how how can people sign up to be part of the uh, Lemonade Day? Yep, so if they just head over to palmerrec.com, it'll be right on our website there, and they can sign up. Awesome. Very all right. good. All right, well, Julia Taylor and Andrew St. George, best of luck. Thank you so Sounds much. Sounds like a great, a great program. We yeah. appreciate you coming in today. Yeah, good luck with the event. It's uh, 856 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Rock 102's Classic Rock Summer is driven by Leon.